In this lesson, we're learning about gene expression. So our focus here is about protein synthesis in this dot point, but there is a lot to it. All right, so the basic flow of information in a cell uses the genetic sequence of the DNA to create a polypeptide or part of a protein, right? And this overarching process has a few steps, and these are the processes that we're zooming in on in this lesson. So transcription and translation are two of the vital processes. We're going from DNA in the gene to essentially getting to an endpoint of a polypeptide chain. Transcription and translation are doing that. All right, so let's think of DNA um, instructions as you would a giant book in the reference section of a library. Let's say it's a giant cookbook and you want to make a recipe from it, but you aren't allowed to check these books out from the library. So you go in, you photocopy a few pages from the book, and then you take the photocopy home and you make the recipe. Essentially, that's what's happening in protein synthesis. The information stored as DNA needs to be used to synthesize a functional gene pro uh, product, but the DNA can't be removed from the nucleus, right? There's too much of it, and it's important that it stays in there for regulation and use later on. So the cell's got to make a copy of what it needs, move these instructions to the cytoplasm, and then make the polypeptide chain there. Okay, both DNA and RNA play important roles in this process. So remember that every cell in a eukaryotic organism within a nucleus will contain the exact same DNA, but we know that each cell is specialized and therefore it doesn't contain the same structures or proteins as one another in different tissues, right? And this is because not all genes are all expressed at the same time. So a red blood cell needs the polypeptides made uh, for hemoglobin, but you know, the ones for keratin and, and substances with strength in our hair and nails, they're going to be needed in the skin, not the red blood cells. So Genes need to be turned on or off depending on the needs of the cell. There is no point wasting energy making a protein it simply doesn't need. And this is all part of gene regulation, which we'll look at next lesson. All right, the first step in this process is transcription, which transcribes the DNA into a strand of messenger RNA in the nucleus. Now this happens in three stages, uh, initiation, elongation, and termination. To start with, the proteins known as transcription factors bind really close to the start at the promoter sequence of that gene, and this is going to help an enzyme called RNA polymerase attach to the DNA strand at the promoter strand uh, at the promoter region. Sorry, it then unwinds and unzips the DNA, breaking those hydrogen bonds between the bases, which exposes the nitrogenous bases, similar to the start of DNA replication. So this opens up a little bubble in the DNA. It's about 15 bases long, and the RNA polymerase must find the start codon on the DNA strand, and this is TAC. RNA polymerase then moves along the DNA strand, and it's going to read in triplets of these base pairs. Now, while it does this, it's attaching these free-floating complementary RNA bases, so C with G, but A with U this time, right? You're... Uh, Gosh, anyway, and it's going to progressively form a strand of messenger RNA. It's single stranded, and this is what mRNA is. Now, the transcription bubble is open at the RNA polymerase, moves along it, and it closes behind it to recoil once it's finished with that section. The bases here are added from 5' prime to 3', prime, so it's building the strand by attaching bases at the 3' prime end. The RNA polymerase is going to keep attracting those nucleotides to build the mRNA strand until it reaches the stop codon. And there's a few different nucleotide sequences for this. It will detach from the RNA, it will release the mRNA, and then the DNA molecule can reform, zip back up, complementary base pairs are bonding again, and then retwist back into its double helix. The single strand of mRNA has to be produced, that's it, and so our photocopy is allowed to leave the nucleus. Now, before it does leave the nucleus, there's some modifications that need to be made. So this fresh, unmodified strand of mRNA is currently known as pre-mRNA, and it needs to be matured. So they do some little uh, modifications here. It needs the introns cut out, okay? They all need to be spliced out, right? And that process is known as splicing. Um, and it also needs to have some chemicals added. So at the five prime end, it's gonna have a little cap put on here, um, and it's made of modified guanine nucleotides, and a three prime end is going to have what's known as a poly A tail. It's about 250 adenines on repeat, and these are going to help to stabilize the mRNA and stop it from degrading when it moves outside of the um, nucleus into the cytoplasm. 
Once the mRNA is matured, it leaves the nucleus. In the process of translation, this is the next bit, the mature mRNA is read and it is translated into a sequence of amino acids in the cytoplasm. Also, it's broken down into initiation, elongation, termination, but that's not our focus right now. Once the mature mRNA strand reaches the cytoplasm, it heads over to a ribosome. And a ribosome, you know, they can be free floating or they can be attached to the endoplasmic reticulum. At initiation, the ribosome will bind to the mRNA at the five prime end, and it's going to move along until it finds a start codon, which is AUG on the mRNA. And so this is where transfer RNA comes into play. So let's learn a little bit about transfer RNA. Transfer RNA is a molecule made of RNA, it makes sense. It bends around on itself to form this really interesting 3D shape. So um, remember that RNA is still single stranded. So because of the way it's folded, there's actually going to be three nucleotides that are exposed at the bottom. And these are known as the anticodon because they're going to match complementary codons on the mRNA strand. Okay. Now, this anticodon is associated with a specific type of amino acid, okay, because that's what we're actually doing here, and they carry this amino acid at that point, right? Here's that attachment site right there. The anticodon and the amino acid are a matching pair. So if the anticodon is AAA, then the amino acid on top will be a specific amino acid specific to that tRNA molecule, um, and it's going to match, you know, it's, it's relevant um, codon on the mRNA. And there's about 20 amino acids to choose from. Right, so the ribosome has bound itself. Oh, let's see if that can work for us. Hang on a moment. Ah, sorry, let's go again. So the mRNA strand has found the start codon, and this is where the fun begins, essentially. The tRNA molecule has the anticodon. It's going to match the start codon. Um, the start's going to be AUG, so the anticodon is going to be UAC. It's going to dock on the codon, and the tRNA molecule will have the amino acid uh, methionine attached, and then the ribosome will bind onto the molecule. And then elongation is going to occur. So another tRNA molecule with a complementary anticodon will match the next one, and it's going to keep doing this over and over. It'll attach, deposit its amino acid onto the meth uh, meth methionine, and a peptide bond is formed. Then the ribosome is going to release the tRNA and it moves along the mRNA strand to continue. So you can see that process happening in this little video. It's going to keep happening until that amino acid chain keeps on growing. Now this is going to keep happening and that really long string of amino acids is going to be formed. Um, the ribosome will retrieve a tRNA molecule that matches that mRNA strand. So that's the ribosome's job at this point. It's going to grab that relevant tRNA, it's going to bind, it's going to take its amino acid, it's going to deposit it onto the growing chain and form that bond. So the order of the amino acids directly relates to the order of the nucleotide seen on the mRNA strand, which was copied from the template DNA strand. So some amino acids are coded for by more than one codon, and remember there's a stop codon and start codon seen in the mRNA strand as well. So eventually the ribosome reaches a stop codon, okay, and the polypeptide chain is released from the ribosome onto uh, into the cytoplasm or the ER. Okay. Some of these chains are fine on their own um, and will be folded to form a protein. Others will be associated with other polypeptide chains and they'll need to find them and form a larger pr um, protein chain in the Golgi body. Now, sometimes an RNA, or sorry, an mRNA strand can be read over and over again to make however much of that polypeptide that is needed. Um, and other times the mRNA strand will simply break down and be recycled uh, by the cytoplasm, you know, as free nucleotides. So this is a really complex set of processes, and I would recommend watching a few other videos to see the whole thing in a continuous fashion. Um, it will take a bit of practice and reading to understand these processes, and you will have heaps of questions about them. It's new and it's exciting for us, and we will cover a lot more of this in class. We have a few lessons dedicated to this, okay? So read over what you need to get out of these processes.